Welcome to Learn Smart Coding, the ultimate destination for mastering cutting edge tech skills. From front end framework to the back end system, our video covers it all. With real time demos and in depth tutorials, we will teach you how to code like a pro. Subscribe now and start your journey to becoming a smart coder. Hello, friends. In this video, we are going to talk about developing the .NET 7 apps with the Docker. And uh, this is part one. Come, let's dive in. The first thing that we have to see is the system prerequisites, right? So before we dive and create uh, any new project, let's set up some installations in the local machine. So the one that you're seeing on my screen is the uh, Visual Studio SDKs, the .NET SDKs. And if you haven't installed this, install this. I'm using .NET 7 because that's the long-term version. I'm not using 8. That's still in preview. Next one is the Docker. So go to docker.com based on your voice, download the Docker desktop and definitely install it and log in it. The next one that we will use is the Visual Studio Code. If you already have the Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, that's fair enough. This is Visual Studio. Community version will do. I have a community version. And the next one is the Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code also supports multiple OS. Uh, you can choose whatever OS you have. I'm using Windows, so I will be choosing my Windows and I've already installed it. All right, so we have installed a couple of, uh, you know, the softwares, the, the IDEs. So the next thing, once you install these softwares, the next thing that we will see is the version check. Okay, so go to the command prompt and type .NET dash dash version. It will give you the version of the .NET that is installed on your machine. The next one that you have to do is docker dash dash version okay if the version is not matching with what you have which means probably you will have the uh, latest or the older one but i have this version okay so we we have installed it we have verified the version and let's talk about the dotnet types now so these are the key project types in dotnet you have uh, the web app which is kind of an apis or an mvc apps or the single page uh, blazer apps or the razor views pages, you know, or even the APIs with uh, gRPC, right? The second type of project that we have is the console app, right? Where you do a scheduled jobs and all those stuff. So the second type was the console app and the third type is the worker app where uh, you have your service applications, queue monitoring stuff, uh, basically the backend service, right? So those kind of things. And then the fourth one is the, just the class libraries, the DLLs where you can uh, share the DLLs within your projects and then you can also create a new kit package or those kind of things are the fourth type. So these four are the types and most probably we will encounter many of these types in our upcoming demos. So come let's start with the project. So let's set up a new project in Visual Studio and configure the Docker. So I'm going to create a new project, the API project in Visual Studio 2022. I'm choosing the .NET Core Web API as a template and then I'm going to choose a location where I wanted to save it so you can save wherever you want I will name this as uh, you know just a hello API okay this is just a very dummy template uh, I just wanted to show you how to set up the docker then we will talk about the real API that we will use okay now here you have an option to uh, enable the docker but uh, let's do that later stage so select the version that you want I'm using 7 and I'm not choosing enable docker okay so the other versions are smaller ones. So here you can choose six as well and then click on create. Let's get that created. All right. So this is the simple one that was created. Okay. Uh, there was a weather forecast, a model, and then there was one controller and then a couple of app settings. Right. It was the template which was uh, given by the Visual Studio. I didn't do anything. So we just have a working one. Okay. So we have a simple get one. I mean, a get endpoint. And, uh, you know, uh, the app setting doesn't have anything much like just just the logging mechanism. There's nothing else. And this program, if you see, uh, it's .NET 6 version. So you don't explicitly see uh, any of the start startup or the program file. So that's just a program.cs, right? And you can choose either through Kestrel or IIS. And that you can find it in the profile section under the properties. You can see there will be two things. One is for the Kestrel where you see the name of the project, the other one is the IS Express. Okay, so you can run this project in two different ways. That's what it means, right? You can change this, whatever you wish, you can run it. If you run it, it's going to give you this URL and then it will launch uh, the default Swagger one. And then you can execute this, it's going to give you some simple result, right? So now we have a simple project based on the template. Now, if you right click on the project, go to add, click on uh, docker support 
then it'll ask you what version you're targeting. We want to target the Linux. So you chose Linux and then there was a Docker file created. If you look at this Docker file, it was fairly simple one. Okay, it's going to expose our application into two ports, 80 and 443. And uh, the first one you see, the from statement, that's the image that's been pulled. Okay, so the image is, is pulled there and then you have the bunch of other statements and like it, which will basically download the packages, build the application and finally put into the final state and it will run the application. I'm going to put the breakpoint here and select the Docker as the startup and click on run, right? So everything else is same. Now behind the scene, Docker kicks in, gets the image, downloads the packages, build it, run it. That's it. Answer wise, the, the application wise, it's all same. You can see a different port coming up. And if you open up the cont uh, the container uh, window right in the bottom, right, you can see the information's there. Now, what we will do, under the bottom, there is something called containers. So click on containers and you can, I'm going to ex expand it so you see it better. So the, this is the Hello App API which is running and you can see the environment section where all the environments are listed, labels, ports, the two ports that we saw in the Docker file, right, 80 and 443. They are all mapped to the host port 32769 and 32768. And you can see volumes, files, logs, details, right? So logs uh, and then all the information, what it is running. So this is what, uh, if you run a project with a Docker file, right? This is what is going to happen. All right, I hear you. What if, if you are a fan of .NET with respect to the Visual Studio Code? So let's take a look at how to do the same thing with Visual Studio Code. So I opened up the command prompt and uh, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project and for that you just need to day, just you need a command called .NET new. When you do that it will list you the number of projects available right. So the default one which is in the square bracket which is the C sharp is the default language and you also have other languages right. So our target is to create a web application like web API. So I'm going to put .NET new web API. So when you do this, it's going to create a .NET web API project and you can also pass a dash o command and then followed by your project name, uh, hello code dot API. So once it creates this project, right, it's, it's creating this project under this. I'm going to change the directory to this project. And if you do a code space dot, that's the current directory, it will open up in the Visual Studio code. Okay. So that's a shortcut. Now here, everything is is almost same right so you can see right side few things are popping up um, you know like you know required assets to build and all those things we will take a look at that but this is a simple project right so click on uh, the right side one required assets to install so I'm gonna install this prompt that was asking us the, the C sharp extension so it will install the C sharp extension the next one is it recognize the dotnet container is not present so you want to install the dotnet container I'm going to install and if you haven't done in this way it's okay go to the extension tab and actually you can install by yourself the dev container and because of the first action that we did there was a dot vs code a creator under which you see two files launch.json and task.json task.json will have the environment variables and all those stuff launch will have launch settings like how we had in the visual studio it's it's exactly same so if you go to the deep section and choose the dotnet code launch like we did the first one right so there's no docker install we are just launching the visual studio so it launched in the uh, port 5191 and we have to put the swagger and it will bring up the swagger ui Right, so we did exactly the same. We haven't done the Docker installation. That's okay. We will do it now. Now let's stop this, whatever we're doing. And then if you go to the to the debugging version, so I'm going to stop this first. Okay, so now uh, there's something called Control Shift P. Use the keyword Control Shift P. And in this command, you add Docker files to the workspace. For me, it's coming up in the first, but if you start typing for the first time, you can you can choose that and then choose the dot and core choose linux as the version here you provide the port to which you want the docker to be used which is atn comma 443 right and then docker compose we will take this as a separate don't install the docker compose for now say no now you see this installed a docker file it's exactly same what we did the first one is the base image 
of uh, the .NET application itself. It's pulling up from the Microsoft registry. We'll talk about it more. Don't worry. And the rest of the stuff is basically it's it's building, it's downloading the packages, building the application, putting the final into the published state. And now you can see a Docker launch in the editing stuff, right? So you choose that and choose the launch as the Docker one. And in the watch, put a request. So you're going to watch all the requests going on and then just hit on Docker launch. Now the application is doing a bunch of uh, coding that we saw in the Docker file, right? So all these images are pulled, it's downloading and you see there's a big uh, command that's coming up. So that's that's what uh, the Docker file will do. The finally it will open up in a different port. You see the port was not 5191, it is 32773. Now behind the scene, everything else is same. Um, we will be able to, uh, you know, go to the output and see uh, what is going on. Now, what we will do is let's go to the request and uh, let's go to the controller and put a breakpoint, right? So when we hit that, we will see whether it is hitting here, okay? Because you also want sometimes to debug what's going on with your application. So let's go to let's let's put a breakpoint. Let's go to the Swagger UI, hit it. Now this will bring us the breakpoint here and not only that, in the watch that we already had a watch on the request, you can expand it, you can see the queries, headers, bodies and all those stuff. So that's how you will do it in the .NET, uh, uh, you will do the Docker stuff in the Visual Studio Code. So if you're fond of Visual Studio Code, that's fine. This is how you will start your project. So if you remember, right, so when this project uh, was started, uh, it was not opening up the Swagger. So there's another tip. So go to this launch.json and the top in the end of the Docker launch, what you're going to do is you're going to put something called Docker server ready action. That's the property under which you can put the URL form in. And what this will do is it will launch the Swagger after the launch of the local host uh, that is running up, right? So I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm running it. Now I would expect it to launch the port as well as the Swagger. Come, let's take a look whether it's doing or not. See, it, it's launching along with the Swagger, right? So that's how you will do. This is just an extra trip. Uh, as in when we move on, we will give you uh, more and more tips. Now you can see the dev container to the left side, right? So you have the timelines in the container. And if you uh, click on the container, it will show up uh, the container and other details. So let's click on the containers. And you can also see the Docker images docker hub all those properties are there right so these are the images that is there in the docker we will explore the docker uh, in in some time we will explore the docker shortly and uh, you can see all these things and if you go to the to the the end of the one which is called docker you can also see the container which is running so this project is hello code api right and the tag is dev and that is what you see here the individual container and if you expand the container you will see the files. You see this. If you just hover on it, it shows you what version, what port it is running. Right, similar to how we saw in the Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code. This is how you see. You see the ports. You see volumes. You see files. You see everything under the the container. Let's explore the Docker desktop. So I've opened up the Docker desktop. I've logged in. You can see my uh, login name in the top right. But this is what you will see. You will see containers, images, and volumes. And right, right now, under the containers, there are two things which says it's running, right? If you remember, the first one was the Visual Studio, which is Hello API. And you can go to the logs. You can see the logs that was created under that project. And you can also inspect. You can see what was mounted, what was the port, what was the environment variables. All those things you can see under the inspect. And then the terminal, you can run some, uh, you know, Linux command. Files and statistics, right? So how much it was used and all those stuff. Files is basically all your... Uh, you know, codings and all those DLLs and all those stuff. Similarly, if you click on the Hello Code API, you don't see logs, right? So this is because the logs, uh, how the Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code treats are different. So, but don't worry about it. We will talk about the logging in the next module. And you can also see here the containers and all those stuff, right? And if you look at the containers, there's a name for each container. The first one starts with 62FDDD. The second one starts with A5, B4, A2, right? So those are the containers that is there. Now let's go to the Docker uh, documents, doc.docker.com. And here you have a bunch of comments, really a lot of comments. Because we're just starting with the Dockers, we will go through, 
you know the basic commands let's we cannot explore every single thing in, in the videos but let's explore uh, you know very basic things and important things like let's open up the terminal you can also say control tick that's a shortcut but you can also go from the terminal window right so if i uh, type docker space ps it will list you the images that is there running on the docker desktop and these two images if you remember the first one a5b that's the project that we created using the visual studio and for the visual studio code it's 62 fdddd right so the two containers running now let's put docker space inspect and then you just need to provide uh, uh, the, just the starting of the container name uh, the commands are powerful enough to figure out what is the container name you don't need to type everything i just typed a5b4 right uh, looks like this is wrong so it is a5b so docker space inspect a5b right so now it it gave you a full json list this will have enough information that you need to explore uh, but you can also specifically uh, retrieve a particular information. But if you scroll down, you can see the environments. Whatever you saw on the Docker desktop, that's what has been dumped here. You can see the network, you can see the environment, what is the IP it is running, all the stuff, right? So now the next one that we have is the the second one, right? Uh, it starts with uh, 62F DD. So if you put that, this is going to bring up uh, the Docker uh, container details of the second one which is the visual studio code project all right so you know how to explore these things some commands we know which is docker inspect docker uh, space a uh, ps command right now if you say docker logs followed by the container name right so the the second one we know we, there was no logs but if you say logs and then followed by the container name the logs that you saw on the docker desktop right the, the logs that was returned by the application because the container is still running you can see all those things so just to summarize in this part one we looked at what and all the softwares that you need to install to start with the docker for the dotnet application and then uh, we saw basic commands we we saw how to create the project and install the docker uh, for those two projects which is in visual studio as well as the Visual Studio Code and finally we went through the Docker desktop, we explored how these things are working, what are these simple containers and then we were also able to explore few Docker commands and uh, that's what we saw in this video and in the next video we will talk about the logging mechanism that is really important for you to uh, start with the Dockers so that you will know how the application is doing and what application is doing right so the next module part 2 will be the logging with the dockers thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos if you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below happy coding